Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, today I want to break down how you can uh, use a three-step process to improve your chemistry physics score for the MCAT. Um, this is a, a system that I personally used and a system that really, really helped me boost my chemistry physics score. I think the chemistry physics score for a lot of my students who have tutored over the past few years, have it's like one of the hardest sections just because I think that this involves the most math, the most conceptual thinking, um, the most equations, things like that. And I think that some of these concepts are not always really well taught in um, college courses. And so that's kind of why I want to go over the step-by-step -step process for improving the chemistry physics score. So the first step is obviously to use resources to learn the content. And I've talked about how to review the miles down review sheets in another video, but as I mentioned, you kind of want to figure out what are the weak points in your um, education? And so what I used to do is I used to use the miles down review sheets, which is a hundred page document to kind of skim through and find um, what points am I weak at? And so if, uh, for example, I would figure out that, you know, I actually need some revision on enantiomers from the organic chemistry section. So I'd go here and I would keep reading organic chemistry until I was like, oh yeah, I don't really remember what enantiomers are. So what I would do is the next thing I would do is go on Google images and try to find images of enantiomers and mirror images, things like that. That'll kind of help me find images that help associate what I'm learning with um, the content that I'm trying to learn, right? And so hopefully this would be a good second pass into what I'm reading right here. The third thing I would do is kind of open up um, a more detailed uh, textbook or something like that. So I had the Berkeley Review books, I also had Exam Cracker books, and I would kind of open this up and learn from these books that explained it really, really well. Um, the Berkeley Review, and I think these other textbooks also have questions associated with um, the exact concept. So if the Berkeley Review, I was reading about enantiomers, I would do like two or three questions from the Berkeley Review to kind of learn that content. Another thing that's really good is the Khan Academy, which is available until 2026. The MCAT videos, if you get um, a plugin called the Video Speed Controller um, on Chrome, that plugin will help you control the speed of the videos you're watching, and you can kind of like 2x speed a lot of the Khan Academy videos that is confusing you um, on the concepts that are confusing you, and watch those videos, and that'll help you review the milestone sheet. So if I had to summarize this real quick, I'd say that I would um, start with miles down review sheets for chemistry physics um, and kind of go through it maybe like three five pages a day um, and do that until you meet a concept that doesn't make sense then I would then I guess you would go to Google images and try to find images that help you associate and learn a concept through images. And then the next thing I would do is I would go to uh, go to a textbook like uh, the Berkeley Review, Princeton Review, Kaplan, whatever, whatever you want. Um, it doesn't really matter which one you're using and try to learn the information and do like two to three questions on on the topic you're confused about. Okay, and then finally, I would, if I'm still confused about the thing and it's really, really confusing, I would watch YouTube video or a Khan Academy video to understand the concept. And hopefully you're getting through like three, five, six pages of the Miles Down review sheets every day, or maybe 10 pages every day. And using this process, you'll kind of um, go through things that make sense to you pretty quickly and go through the things that don't make sense to you with a little bit more depth. And, um, you know, I think all these resources are really good. Wikipedia and Google Images, especially to me, were just like these really great resources that summarize things really quickly. Just even the Wikipedia, the first um, paragraph of a concept, like if I read about uh, SN2 reactions and I saw a Wikipedia page on it, just reading the first paragraph of that Wikipedia page would be really helpful for me to understand what's going on. Similarly, if I Google imaged um, SN2 reactions, it would just be really helpful for me to kind of understand, oh, well, it's like a backside attack and it's um, causing this to invert and things like that. And so that was kind of helpful. Okay, the next thing um, that really helped is doing a ton of timed passages. 
and I kind of ordered this in, in terms of like what I believed were really, really valuable resources. All four of these I thought were great resources. Section banks, absolutely, absolutely. One of the students I was teaching didn't know um, what a section bank was. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're missing out because these questions are hard as hell. These are really, really difficult questions that um, really, really kind of force you to understand the concepts. Some of them are not that um, great. You know, some of them are not super well written, but there's in the section banks, there's a hundred chemistry and physics questions and I would recommend really going through that hundred and understanding exactly why you got it wrong, why you couldn't get it right, what why they're asking the other answer choices and why those answer choices are wrong, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I would go through these section main questions and um, when I was reviewing it, I would go to R slash MCAT, the Reddit group, and kind of um, search up the question that I got wrong. And for almost every single question on the section bank, somebody's asked um, well, why is this right or wrong before? And um, you can just go to those Reddit threads and read um, the answer explanation that people have posted about, you know, why the answer is right or wrong. And you can kind of see how people think through these questions and why you're getting it right or wrong. So section banks, absolutely, absolutely. Chemistry, physics, um, section bank is so helpful in improving your score. When I was, I was tutoring a really big um, class of MCAT students one time, like 22 people through, um, through uh, exam crackers and I was teaching them and like a lot of the questions that I would pull were from the section bank because um, I want want them to kind of like figure out the reasoning of the toughest questions that AAMC was asking. Okay, um, the next thing is the AAMC actual exams. 100% I think you should be able to understand why every single question you're going through is right or wrong through the AAMC exams. I think they've given you six um, at this point in time. I had five when I was taking it. And so make sure you go through every single one of these exams. Make sure you understand why you're getting the chemistry physics uh, questions right or wrong. And that'll be really helpful for you in terms of improving your score. Okay, the next thing uh, I think was helpful was next step. Uh, I took next step exams and these were actually the only two um, only two types of exams I've taken, so I can't really comment on Kaplan or other things, but I thought Next Step was pretty difficult. Some of the questions weren't always written that well, but Next Step was a really good resource in improving my chemistry physics score. And then the, the last thing that I thought was really helpful was Altius. Altius was really awesome because they have video explanations for every single question, and I thought that was really phenomenal in terms of helping me kind of consolidate and solidify the information in my brain. I actually thought Altius was one of the best things that improved my bio bio score, and Next Step was one of the best things that kind of improved my um, chemistry physics score. Obviously, after these two resources, these two resources are really good. If you want more, I think the Khan Academy um, questions are really good too. Those are all free on their website, so you can find Khan Academy um, questions. And then um, I guess UWorld is also really good. I did UWorld questions too. Uh, so you should have more than enough uh, questions to kind of help you get through this. And then, um, okay, so I think I've, I'll summarize what I said here too. So uh, do AMC official resources like section bank and exams. I use r slash mcat reddit group to learn and solidify the information and why you get everything wrong and then use next step and LTS as you want to keep doing more and more practice passages okay um, also you can use Khan Academy and UWorld okay the last step is to find patterns that help you extract more and more information. For most people who you see and you talk to kind of break the 520 point of the MCAT and kind of hit a 100 percentile or 99th percentile or do really, really well, they kind of find some pattern that helps them extract a lot more from the passage than other people who are reading the passage in less time. Uh, and this happens most of the time subconsciously. It's not something that you predict happens, but eventually once you start doing enough of these passages, you realize that there's this point that clicks to you and you're like, oh, and this happened to me like after a couple of months of doing practice questions where I was like, oh, I get it now. Like I understand that almost every single experiment that they share in the chemistry physics section, almost every single one has this table um, associated with it. And a lot of them, the table is like, they change one amino acid in a protein and that affects the protein structure and that affects the protein function. And then they have some biomarker that helps them figure out what is the um, result of the change in the protein structure. So then I realized like, oh, a lot of these experiments have the same type of pattern or 
sometimes I would see a lot of questions that I would ask, like, what is the purpose of this? And almost always the purpose of that molecule was to be a biomarker to figure out if the, I don't know, if the, the experiment was working properly. Or a lot of times they'll ask a question about a control in the experiment and like why this molecule is added. And then eventually when you read enough of these passages, you really realize like, even before they ask the question, you'll be like, okay, they're definitely going to ask the question about this because that is the control in this experiment. And so like, I think they're going to ask a question about this. And like, eventually things start to click for you and you can kind of see the passage and extract information in a way that other people can't extract information. And that's not something that is taught to you. That is just something that you get out of doing the practice enough times. And so that's kind of why these time passages are so valuable because they help you develop that skill of figuring out what is it that they're going to ask? What is it that they want you to learn from this passage and what is it about this experiment that is so interesting to the researchers that they wanted to write a report and once you kind of do enough questions you're going to get to that level where you're able to improve your chemistry physics score and it becomes sort of a breeze for you and uh that's kind of my my uh, breakdown of how to improve your chemistry physics score if you have any questions please feel free to leave them down in the comments below and i'll get back to you and i'll see you in the next video bye everybody